Hi, shalom friends. Have you ever heard of the expression, time is money? In America, that's a, that's a slogan. No one has time because everyone's busy making money and investing time or sacrificing time means giving up money and come on, we're doing, we're doing business, aren't we? But actually, time is not always money. I mean, imagine a person going into a dentist with a severe toothache and he was told that his tooth has to be taken out. So he goes to the dentist and he says, do you take out teeth? He says, certainly. And uh, he says, how long does it take? He says, well, we could make it within, within five minutes here in and out. This is basically, you sit in the chair, we give you an injection to numb the pain, and in seconds, your tooth is out. He says, oh, that sounds remarkable. How much money do you charge for this procedure? $200. Guy looks at him, $200 incredulously. Who, who charges $5, $200 for five minutes? So the dentist looks at him and he says, okay, if you want, I could take it out slowly. How well, if I took it out over an hour, would you feel more comfortable paying the $200? Well, obviously, no one wants to have a tooth pulled out slowly and extricating it with, with, with pain. You want the procedure to be done painlessly and quickly and efficiently. And the fact that it costs $200 is not for the time, but for the expertise. Well, let's give a different example. Imagine you're the CEO of a very, very multinational corporation and uh, your security expert comes up to you and he says, you know, there's someone tampering with the, with the computers. We have a firewall, we have security, we have everything, but um, there, there's, there's stuff going on. I know things are being transferred and names are being suddenly deleted and we have a, either a worm or someone is in our computer. Well, the guy freaks out. We're talking major, major, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars, and who knows what could be in lawsuits. Call the best guys. He calls up Google or Alphabet, and it says, send me your best team. Five nerds come, security experts, uh, computer programmers, and they're schwitzing, they're perspiring, they're there, they're, they're there four or five days. They can't figure it out. They don't know where it's coming from and where it's going. And the CEO is getting really anxious. Did you solve the problem? No, I didn't. How come? I have people working 24-7, but we're not getting any closer. Get me another crew. Call up MIT. Get me the best. Okay, another crew comes. Another crew of geniuses and nerds and who knows what. And another week passes, and now it's already going from bad to worse, from worse to extremely distressing. And one day, the CEO, who's tearing out his hair, gets a email I know you have a problem, I could solve it. Contact me. Of course, he contacts him, and in comes to his office a 17-year-old guy wearing dirty dungarees, and he has a cat with him. And the CEO says, how'd you know that we had a problem? He says, look, doesn't make a difference. I have contacts, I know. What do you want? He says, well, you want me to fix it or not? He said, you? I got two teams, geniuses. I'm, I'm paying them high top, you know, top of the line. And you're going to be able to fix it? He says, listen here. I could fix it in 10 minutes. It comes with a price. It's $1 million to be transferred into my bank account. He says, are you crazy? First of all, I don't believe you could do it. And who pays a million dollars for 10 minutes? He says, it's up to you. You could keep the schlepping with these two teams. Or you could have me in 10 minutes. It's a money guarantee. If it doesn't work, you just take back your million dollars. Anyway, sounds too good to be true, but it is true. 10 minutes, the guy fixes it. So friends, do you think he overpaid? because he paid a million dollars for, for, for 10 minutes work? Of course he didn't overpay, because he's not paying for time. He's paying for, for brilliance. He's, he's paying for expertise. He's, he's paying for productivity. He's paying for something that works. So what's my message to you? Well, how, how much money do you think it costs to get a good education? Uh, you think about it. 
How, well, how much time? Well, you got eight years and four years and then another two years and four years. You, you start adding up the years. You say, wow, we're talking about six figures. If you really want to be in a, in a private school or in a fine, it might be even more than that. You say, okay, so let's make believe. It costs $200,000 to get yourself a first-class education um, of, of, of the Yale University uh, caliber. Now I want to ask you a question. How much does it cost and how much time does it take to become wise? Now this is not, an, uh, uh, not a simple question to answer. An education you can measure by the diploma. But wisdom? Where do you go for wisdom? How much time do you need to, to acquire the wisdom? Well, I could give you an opening. You could acquire wisdom from a child, from a plumber, uh, from a philosopher, from a housewife, from a taxi driver. You could acquire nuggets of wisdom from all people at all times. A good resource is a rabbi. When was the last time you sat down and had a 10-minute conversation with a rabbi? Discussing your business, uh, your family, uh, education, your issues with life, how to, how to resolve something with your neighbor. Yeah, you have a slot. So, whoa, no, 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 I go to experts. Okay. How much time do you need to go to this expert? Well, the expert says over five, six sessions, we should be able to come to a resolution. How long does it take to become wise? Just a moment. See, that's where we have something called Torah. Torah is God's wisdom. God is endless and infinite. It cannot be measured in terms of value, monetary value, nor can it be measured in terms of, of days, minutes, or months, or years. And this infinite God put some of his wisdom into the Torah, and therefore, one could acquire wisdom both through a lifetime as well as in a moment. Because when it comes to the infinite, time is not relevant. It's expertise. It's the power. It's the clarity. It's the light, or what we call illumination. So the rabbi that I suggest you talk to is someone who has indulged in God's Torah, in absorbing as much of God's wisdom as humanly possible. You will get, acquire a lot of wisdom from him. You don't need a lot of time. You need an open heart. I suggest very, very strongly, you start opening up the Torah yourself. Open up the Bible, the Chumash. Start studying the, the weekly Torah portion. Study a little bit of the Tanya, something of Jewish mysticism. There's Jewish law. There's incredible holiness and wealth of spirit. And indeed, that elusive quality called wisdom that's found and accessible before us in a book or the books called the Torah. So on your journey... Uh, may you meet the right teachers, and may you find the right books. I'll just give you some pointers. Rabbis and Torah, an unbeatable combination. Shalom. Shalom.